Okay, we are <coughs> doing Hilchas Yisrael de Torah, Perak Aleph Halachos one through six. Oh, sorry, yeah, not yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. That's just a, a just in case uh, thing, yeah. So while you're getting out, we'll review what we did. We'll review what we did yesterday, and then uh, and then try to answer questions. So Yisrael de Yisrael is about the foundation of foundations and the pillar of all science or wisdoms is to know that there exists a, fir, uh, a first existence, a primary existence. And he brings into existence all of the existence, or he, uh, he, he, he causes to exist all of the existence. He calls all of the existence to exist. And all of the existences from heaven and earth, all of the uh, not existences. Um, didn't we have a better term for this? Matsui is an existence, and we said nimtsaim. Oh, those that happen to you, or like yeah, yeah, right, like things, things that yeah, yeah. Do we have a noun though? Like one, uh, one word? I don't remember. All right, so all of the existing things, whatever, um, uh, from heaven and earth and everything in between, only exist because of the truth uh, or the reality of his existence. If you, we, we need, we do need to find yale aladas because I was thinking about it yesterday when we read lo yale lachalahim afirim apanai. He says there, like if you just look, I mean, skipping ahead a little bit to Vav, hmm. so certainly he cannot mean, I mean, when he says like, we, we, like I would translate that as like if, like if one could entertain the notion that, you know, right. but that's, if you're entertaining the notion of there being another existence other than God, it's not like instantaneously you you're over the law, I don't think. It's like if you believe or if you think or if you hold that there's a, a, a God other than him, you know? I mean, like one is like a, uh, being male al dato, being male al das is just like a, a thing you could do on command, you know? I don't think that's what he means when he says, you know? Right. Right. So I, I, I don't know what to make of that. But here he certainly means like, like if one could conceive of the notion that that he didn't exist, then nothing else could exist. Um, if one could conceive of the fact that, uh, that that no other existing things existed, he alone would exist and he would not be negated by their negation. Because all existences need him. And he blesses, he doesn't need uh, them nor any one of them. So the questions we had yesterday are, so the main idea is the idea of God as the independent existence. The questions we had are, what does he mean by Yisod HaYisodos and Amr Chachmos? Why is Yediyas Matsui Rishon, you know, that? Um, what's with Yud Ke Vav Ke allusion in the letters, which is like a minor question, I think. Um, uh, I'll just answer that really quickly. Yeah. Maybe. Um, the, the Yud Ke Vav Ke, that's the name of like, you know, like, is was and always will be so like that's like like uh essential existence right and that's like the defining feature that differentiate that he's trying to differentiate from all the creators. interesting okay i hear that 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 definitely fits yeah yeah i guess the question so this raises another question first of all just a side point um i i, I made a video a five minute kavana video about this uh which i guess i'll try to link in the thing i believe it's a mach locus whether yoke valke is Hayahovi be here or not? Really? I, mean, I think the Rama holds Davka not. Really? Oh. It's Machlokas we shown him on whether the Shoresh of Yoke Vavke is from like Haya, like to exist, oh. um, and or whether there is no derivation and it's oh. its own Shoresh. So the Rama holds its own Shoresh. Now, he does mean that it conveys the idea of independent existence. So you can yeah. still say your idea, but I just thought I mentioned that as an aside. A, well, yeah. Doesn't he? I mean, it is its own Shoresh, but it's definitely supposed to. Like, see, like, be close to. It. So I, I, I'm. That's what I'm not sure about exactly. because I, I, my reading of that Rambam. I mean, you, you judge for yourself. It's a five minute share. <laughs> um, you can judge for yourself. I, I think part of the idea is that 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 uh, is that God the the the, the proper noun uh, designating God can't refer to anything else. Can't have anything else in common with it. You okay. know, and I, that's why I think it's like an essential. Uh, a central part of his definition like you could read it as though he's not actually like arguing on those who hold it but i do think he is ah, so okay. you can judge yourself um i was going to say another thing also one question i don't think i mentioned yesterday this has always bothered me not that part all existences need him 
Mm. Why is he have to say little lahem? Meaning, like, once you say in otzarich lahem, like, the, what's the havamina? Oh, but he might need one of them, just one. You know, like, yeah, it's just I, I, I don't know, I don't know why he has to say that. Also, I, I don't know if this is intentional, but yeah. when we were reading this, or like a lot of things that the Rome writes, like in Hilchus Shuvah or whatever, there is a sense of like getting carried away and like his like philosophical like floweriness. <laughs> like, like, oh, that's, that's really nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. Realize these nuances. Yeah. Right. Do you think that's he's like trying to go for that? Like, I don't think so. Um, I mean, I, I, I think when he, he, uh, whatever he includes here, then he includes it intentionally in, in this part. I'm not saying the Rambam never does that in the Mishnah Torah. For example, like at the end of the of the Sfarim or at the end of the sections, I think he does use more flowery language because, um, but here when he's defining, you know, Yedias Davar Zem say, I think each part is going to be critical for that, you know? Oh, okay. We have a mystery guest, which is a phone. It's Hi. Me. All right, hey, me. you did make it. Okay, through the phone. Good. All right, so it's time. Uh, all right, good. Yeah, because he, he's driving. So he wasn't reception, but I guess he's driving. Okay, good. Only missed the Soda Yisos so phone call. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we just reviewed and, and raised the questions here. Okay. Okay. Um, it's hard to think more about the man. Sure. I don't, I don't know if this is what he meant by this. Yeah. But it just like struck me that this was like. Um, you know, some people um, would say that, you know, let's say you're doing this was for God or, you know, helping God out with like creation or something. Yeah. Like that. yeah. Not to work those notions in those, in, those in those like positions. But yeah. Um, this seems like it's directly going against that. Um, uh, not necessarily mm -hmm. he's. But that's his point. Yeah. But that he's he's saying it's not like it's not that any um I guess what he's more talking about causes than like anything else, but it's not like he requires any like anything. Uh, so are you saying I, I see that about the message in general. I, I'm missing are you using that as an answer to why he has to say both points? Lahen and Echmehen? Because if so, that I'm missing. I'm, I'm, unless you're not trying to say that. Well, I'm saying, I'm saying the Echmehen specifically is like, he doesn't need um, any particular thing. Not just, not just that he doesn't need let's say, like, the world to exist, but he doesn't need like mitzvahs mm -hmm. or like the Jews or anything like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah, you, you, you definitely see that. Uh, that as, as you said, that as an outcome of what he's saying, whether that is what he's yeah. getting at is a good yeah. question. So let's try to figure out the Yisod 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 thing, right? Why is this idea the, and by the way, when he says uh, the, the Yisod 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 I think he means the entire paragraph. I don't think he just means the notion of a primary existence, I think, you know. Oh, and I should also mention just also for, because I don't think I've actually, I don't know if I've said this on the Ram Bikiyos thing before, so I'll say it, is um, one of the uh, de reason, one of the many reasons why you should use a good Ram a good edition of the Mishnah Torah is because the Ram divided this, um, uh, he made the divisions, uh, the original divisions, and then subsequently pu uh, publishers, I almost said punishers, uh, <laughs> that too, came along and uh, made their own divisions. And so we, we, we referenced that yesterday in saying the lefikach in amitaso amitas achamehen, um, that that really is part of the second halacha. Um, and this whole first paragraph from the word yesod to the word mehem is one paragraph. So the Roman views that as the first chunk, you know, even though the publishers split it into two and three. Um, and I should mention that if you're using Mechon Mamre, which again is the only completely reliable, <laughs> complete and completely reliable edition of the Mishnah Torah online currently, um, then the way that they do it is they make the bold letters to be where the Rambam divided things. And then the bracketed letters is where the standard published editions divided things. So that's how you know what it, which is which is which. And there are different systems that different editions of the Ramam use. You know, um, so yeah, that's just a public service. Well, why is that one the most uh, reliable? Um, because it is uh, based on you know on the manuscripts, and it's entirely available uh, for free. You know, um, and it's on the entire thing. Like for example, like I, I have mentioned before, the Sefer um, uh, either it's 
It's called the Sefer Hamuga, mm -hmm. or the Oxford edition is the one that the Ramam signed off on, but that's not on the entire mission. The Torah that's on Hamada and I think Ahava yeah. uh, up through the Seder at Philos. Uh, so that's not on the entire thing. Oh, uh, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We lost time, but <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so what is the, uh, and, I, also, and that why I bring that because that's what I mean. Uh, that, that, that's what leads me to believe that the entire first paragraph is part of the Soda Yisos Ram Rechachmos because if you said no, he's only referring to f up until and then you stopped right. that's not where the Ram divided it that's where the publishers divided it yeah yeah mm -hmm. i haven't thought about yellow alpha dots oh okay um i don't have like the technical yeah um conversations i have like uh um what to say it um that when when uh, when a person thinks about things that it, there's like there's like the shots that are a reflection of your belief. And then there's also, um, there's um, actually like surface level thoughts. Kind of like if let's say you have like a building with like a bouncer, you know, there's like, there's um, there's the thoughts that are, there's like people that are inside. Yeah. Um, um, uh, that like, that's like your, or, um, I'm not going to try to explain that. <laughs> okay. oh, there's, like, there's, there's um, people on the inside, and then you have like a bouncer who's like, who's like examining people and then yeah. like selecting some to, to come. Yeah. Um, and I think if you're, um, I don't think it's the examining on the outside that's uh, that he's talking about. I think it's the letting them in, enter inside. Okay. I, I hear that. That, that, that. that would work out, right? Because then, if you were to be Mal al hadas meaning if you let this thought um, become part of the way that you view reality, then, um, then uh, oh, sorry, I, I wasn't sure which one I was talking about. Hold on. Um, does that answer my, so that, I mean, okay, that certainly, that certainly would work for the, um, for the lo uh, yeh l'chalohimachir m'apanai, right? Because that means that if you let that in become part of your belief system, then that's uh, that's um, uh, then you're Kofer Baker, right? But does that work for the uh, his hypothetical thingies? Because that was the thing that was bothering me is is why does he use the same phrase for Imiel Adas Shu Eno Matsui and Imiel Adas and and for the Lav. Um, can you read and translate the second half of the paragraph again? If one were to bring to mind that he doesn't exist, then nothing else could exist. And if one could bring to mind that all of the existences besides him didn't exist, he alone would, would exist and he would not be negated by their negation because all of the existences need him and he doesn't need any one of them, uh, them or any one of them. See, I, the way I would take this in isolation is he's talking, he's defining the concept, right? He's saying this Matsui Rishon who is Mamsi Kol Nimsa and everything needs him, based on that definition, then, or like this is like a refining of the definition that, that he's in, he, he, he causes their existence such that if he didn't exist, they couldn't exist and that their existence doesn't negate his existence. Meaning he's, he's he, when he says, if and then, it's talking about like within the idea. If this, then, 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 you know, no. yeah. So all of that is, is an explanation of what the idea is of this Matsui Rishon. Mm -hmm. But that's not what he's doing in That's talking about an action, a cognitive act that you're doing. Mm -hmm. If you, embrace the 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 notion that you know that god uh that there's a another god other than this right yeah it is really easy to say right? it is yeah it's really it's troublesome yeah i'm not gonna get caught up in that because it's clear from context like what he means but it is it is weird especially the other the weird thing is there are other exceptions that you could use like like in um the, the other expressions you could use in um how did he say the in the uh in the minion of mitzvah losa say number one um didn't he say 
or am I am I uh, imagining that? Or maybe he said that in the uh, translation of Sefer Mitzvahs. But Machshava, right? Yeah. So that would be a different statement. Mm, yeah. 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 That, that's more like you're actually accepting the belief. Like, yeah. Right. Or even if even even if the connotation wasn't that, if he just used that here, I would be I'd be yeah. fine with that. Yeah. yeah. And did, did he also use that in the Koseris? Uh, Shaloyalim and Machshava. Yeah. Right. Huh. Right. Yeah. So that, that that's. I mean, I would be <laughs> that both helps and hurts. It helps in the sense that he clearly does mean something else. Yeah. But why doesn't he use it here? That, that's why I don't like. You know. Yeah. Okay, but let's let's figure out the Yisodi Yisodi Ramban Chachamos. That's the main question. I don't care about this so much. Um, yeah. Right. So just on the surface, it sounds like he's saying that of things that are foundations, this is the one that's a foundation to them. So you can't have foundations without this one. And we're not talking about Torah foundations. We're talking about all foundations. Mm -hmm. So whatever that means. And then we're also saying that um, that you can't have Chachmos without this. Okay. Amud, I'm learning as serving a similar function to Yisodos. It's just that like you have the Yisod and then the Amudim are on top of the Yisod, mm -hmm. you know, and then the Chachmos on top of that. So functionally, it's the same thing. It's functionally, it's going to be that it's propped up by it, but Yisod is more uh, fundamental. Um, and the Yisod is the most fundamental. Okay. Yeah. Also, one thing just to, um, just because I... I've, I feel like I've heard people make this mistake before. Ramam is not saying that God is the Yisodos of Amun mm -hmm. He's saying the knowledge of a primary existence right. is the Yisodos, uh, Yisodos of Amun mm -hmm. God is the Yisoda Yisodos. You know, but that's not what the Ramam is saying. Right. He's, yeah. he's a foundational existence. Yeah, so he's saying the idea. So like, you can't have any Chachmos without the idea of a, a primary existence. I think people get tripped up because they see statements from and they're like, oh, that's what he's talking about. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Um, and then just in terms of the, just to ask the question in a more like a, uh, you know, classic way is like, is he saying that you can't have atheists, you know, like, like, uh, and, and what would you say? Would you say that an, a, a, an avowed atheist um, does not have Chachmos? Right. Or would you say, no, he really must have an idea of, uh, of a Matar Rishon, you know? And then what does it mean to not have an idea if, of this? If an atheist so, so it's interesting because he doesn't say to not have an idea of this. He doesn't acknowledge at, at any point, I don't think. That, anyone, that you can have, you can not have this idea? I'm saying like if an atheist doesn't have it. Oh, if an atheist doesn't have it. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Oh, then, sorry. The, an atheist, sorry. If an atheist does have it. Yeah. What does that mean? What, why is there a mitzvah? It's oh, no. Oh, no. Because th this is not the entire mitzvah. Uh-huh. The mitzvah is is Aleph, Bet, Gimel, and Gimel, uh, right? Um, Which we haven't defined yet, you know? Okay. And the mitzvah is also... Um, uh, meaning, the mitzvah is going to be contingent on what we mean by Yediyah, mm -hmm. you know? Um, which which might encompass more than just that first point, you know, like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just speculating here. I, I, I don't know for sure, but. Right. I mean, just to throw something out there, um, then, and I don't even know if this is actually what he means, but but anything, any, I'm actually starting with the Chachmas before we go to the Yisodos, but anytime you have a Chachma, then, all Chachmos are dependent, the notion of any Chachma is dependent on there being an underlying reality, okay? Because um, that's what, what Chachmos are, is they are like attempts at building theoretical models to approximate the un underlying reality, you know? Um, so does that necessitate this idea of an independent existence? Meaning that let's say you had a uh, two two modern philosophical uh, views that would that allegedly deny this are uh, solipsism and skepticism. Mm. Solipsism meaning being that I don't know if there's a formal definition, but my understanding being that nothing exists except my mind, and skepticism is it's impossible to know anything. Right. You know, so skepticism might not be related to this, but solipsism you are positing something about reality that nothing exists except for my mind. You know. So, um, so even the, so the, so the solipsist, so what is it that he's doing when he's like, like, you know, he has Chachmos. I mean, he's, he, he's just like, 
knowing aspects of his own mind. He's actually knowing a, a reality, you know, but then maybe, maybe that is, uh, maybe in his mind, he is, he is the Mato, you know, Rishon. I mean, that's essentially what it comes down to, right? Cause he's saying that nothing else exists, exists other than my mind and nothing affects my mind in the sense that my mind is the thing that determines all things, you know? Right. Also the flip side, could, couldn't you hold that there is an underlying reality without thinking there is a Mato Rishon? Yeah, like in, right. That's a good question, right? Because see, okay, so th this might get down to it, right? Is that what do we mean when we say something is real? So there's no way to define that, mm -hmm. right? It's like a category, a primary category in the mind, you know. So like whatever that underlying reality is, anything that we talk about in knowledge is going to have to be something that is like when we talk about. Uh, I mean, I was going to deploy this later on, but uh, when he says lefikach in amitazo amitazo achamehem. And we might have talked about this earlier also, but like the, the uh, what's the definition of truth? Mm. Uh, that it corresponds with something real. Right, corresponds with, with, with reality, right? Corresponds with something real, right? So so like the notion of, and, and knowledge is, is when the mind apprehends truth. So any notion of truth is gonna have to come down to a correspondence with a reality, something that you're saying is, is the opposite of non-existent, you know, like that is, and if that reality were dependent on, on other things, so then those other things would be the reality. It's like, you're going to, you can't have trouble all the way down, you know, like, you know, you sold us all the way down. So you have to have an idea of, of a reality. Yeah. And in terms of going back to your question about the mitzvah. So that's, that's what he is saying. The mitzvah is that, that, that underlying reality is God. Mm -hmm. You know, like it almost like it reminds me, for example, of when I read to you in the early days of this of uh, when we were doing B'Shem Hashem Kel Olam, and I read from that um, book about uh, like ancient religions and how Israel was different. Right. And it said that that in there in all these other like uh, in these polyistic religions or these pagan religions, there's like a supernatural realm in which the gods live mm -hmm. and like there are magical forces. So like that realm is like the underlying existence in which the gods exist mm -hmm. you know so if you for example believed that there's like there is the realm of reality and then hashem exists within that mm -hmm. so now you're attributing elohus to or you're attributing the matsui region status to that that realm mm -hmm. not not to hashem you know like hashem is not me like for example th this is also the problem with people who claim that uh that the first of the series of Dibros, or the, I guess the Lo Yil Halahim Acherim, is not true monotheism, but it's monolatry, mm -hmm. where you're worshiping one God out of many. According to the Ram, then that is, uh, I, I'm pretty sure that would be a, I mean, he says, Kol Amala Adato Shisham Eloah Acher Chutz Mizeh, you know, that would be, um, uh, well, actually, maybe, maybe, maybe we were not there yet. Yeah, forget, forget I brought that up. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that we'll have to get to when we get to that, that clause. But I guess that, that, that's what I'm saying here is that like, like if you believe in Hashem, but you think that Hashem is not the fundamental, uh, is, is not the, the Matsui Rishon that everything else is dependent on, then, then you're not being behind this mitzvah. Right, but let's say you think the realm is the Matsui Rishon. Right. Then you would be being behind this, seemingly. You wouldn't be behind the mitzvah. That, that, that's where I was going here is you, it wouldn't be, being Mekayim the uh, the mitzvah as a whole, right? Because he says, oh, yeah, right? Because this is where he says, uh, hold on. Where did he say? Uh, yeah, at the end of Gimel, or at the end of his Gimel. His Gimel, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, no, 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 never mind. Uh, Fika, uh, hold on a second. Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's in hay, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so l l let's, I guess, read the intervening part. Also. <laughs> Therefore, his truth is not like the truth of any one of them. And what that means now, I think now we have a better understanding of this, is that, uh, or his reality, is that, um, that uh, God is like the measure of, again, it's truth, the way we use the word truth, as in like true, false, in speech or in ideas is it corresponds with reality but god is the thing that that this corresponds with he is the standard of truth so to speak uh -huh. you know um is that truth itself yeah right in fact who says that 
Ram. Yirmiyahu. Oh. <laughs> Hashem oh, yeah, emes. Yeah. Hashem yeah. is truth, right? Yes. You know, yeah. Who levado emes? He's the only truth. Vein laachir emes kamito. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, who? So, so th- that's getting into a little bit more. I mean, I. It is a good question. What is the difference between if you just had the first paragraph and you didn't have the second paragraph, the lefikach and emes stuff? What would you be lacking in your idea of God? Right. Like this is introducing a new, a new note. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's finish reading. So like what this seems to be saying is like this, is if you just had the first paragraph, you would have the idea of contingency, right? But like, I'm just going to talk this out, but lots of things are contingent on other things, but that doesn't mean that their reality is fundamentally different. You know, the, 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 uh, the image on the screen is contingent on the display, you know, on the hardware, which is dependent contingent on the power. But that doesn't mean that, that the image on the screen and the power have fundamentally different realities, you know? So if you just had the first halacha, you would say that, oh, everything's contingent on God and, um, and he doesn't need any of them. But you're not bringing that to the level of of redefining what you mean by reality. So that's what the second halacha introduces, the second paragraph, which is that therefore God is real in a way that nothing else is real, and He occupies He occupies that fundamental reality that 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 He alone is in, and nothing else is in that 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 zone. It's not just a matter of contingency; it's a matter of his, of His. You know, we're, we're like through reading these, we're carving out. We said that the idea of reality is a basic idea in the human mind. You know, and you can't talk about knowledge without an idea of reality. But then, what halacha, what the second halacha does um, is uh, is it it says therefore you have to create in your mind the space of the true reality, and then all other things that you call real are not fully real in that same sense because they can't exist except on the terms of the ultimate reality. They have to match up. Their reality is just in line is is what the will is of this of this reality. You know. Right. So it is adding a new note of reality beyond contingency. That they're all like, yeah. yeah. And, and just, just to also clarify what I mean when I say it's adding, uh, this is a question that the uh, Abravanel has on the Rambam's first four Ikarim in the 13 Ikarim, God's existence, his oneness, his non-physicality, and his eternality. Um, and I, I bet Rav Kezal either has or will be going through this in Sefer Ikarim, because I think he deals with this also, is conceptually, all of those are one idea. You can't, God cannot be one unless he is not physical. And he cannot be, um, uh, and if he is independent existence, he must be one. And if he's outside of time, you know, so they're all one idea. So why does the Ram have 40 karim? So the way Rafesach has explained it on numerous occasions is that, that even though logically they're one idea, the mind has to like go through each of these channels independently because in our mind, physicality and temporality and multiplicity and existence are, are four different like qualities, you know? So you have to realize, like if you did not make that connection of God, you know, if you said in your, in your mind, like, like God is not physical, that, that's not automatically going to lead you to realize, to, to go through the process of negating time from God, you know, like, even though logically, like, like it, it, it follows, you know, so you have to like independently go through that. So what I'm saying here is, is you could make the, when I'm saying that there's the idea of God, of, of God being uh, a non-contingent existence versus the idea of God being a, the only true reality, ultimately those are going to be the same idea, but the Ram has to spell out this idea of God being a different reality for the sake of this mitzvah, that the mitzvah is to know that um, that God is the ultimate reality, and I don't know if I, I don't remember. I remember yesterday we we said what kind? How can he say that Anochi Hashem Lekacha is a mitzvah? That's not commanding you to do anything, right? So, um, so I can't answer that. <laughs> no, I, I had a thought, but it it, it, it slipped away. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. So there are two aspects. Uh, there are two aspects. Yeah. Um. He's going back to the home of the couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to go back. Yeah, to so that. let's say, like, a physicist. Yeah. Who, um, let's say, an atheistic, atheistic physicist. Yeah. Who, um, let's say he maintains that there's the four fundamental forces, like, there's the four fundamental forces. Yeah. Uh, um, and then there's also or the, the singularity. 
Okay. I think I ran out for Mitch the minute what was the start of the beeping. Okay. Um, so would that like be his, like, would that be his? his yeah, I think so. Though that would be his meaning. I don't know about what, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why you're including the singularity in that. Oh, oh, yeah. Right, because the singularity is going to hold preceded in accordance with the forces of physics, right? Or is he not? Well, like one of those is going to be. Please, you have to say that it like axiomatically existed, but I'm not. I'm not focusing on that. Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah, but whatever he holds is the the underlying nature of reality. That would be his his uh, Matsui Rishon. That nothing else could exist without that, and. And it is not dependent on anything more fundamental because he's holding that that is the, at the that's at the bottom, you know. But it wouldn't be a different, truer kind of existence. It would just be other things. That's a good point, you. right? That's a good point. So maybe I think. I mean, it sounded like a good point. <laughs> so like, 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 could we think about that then? Why, why not? Right. Well, because there's just like every other thing that just happened to be the first or whatever in his mind, at least. Yeah. So he's thinking. And everything, everything depends on them. So what? what, what? Yeah, I mean, it's not like this, this thing is truly a book because of the four fundamental forces. Like, yeah, it's not right. Like, that's not the standard by which I judge something. Right, right. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's something slippery about that. Yeah. Idea. <laughs> yeah. So what's the Isoto Isotos then? I think this is good for Amuda Chachmos. Oh, I hear what you I mean, you saw it as an idea uh, that that other ideas uh, are dependent on, right? Right. Congrats. <laughs> uh, see, for example, I would not say the wrong is just being poetic in order to spell out Yoke Vavke, and that's why he added these words. I think he's getting to ideas here. Right. Also, could someone have, I guess, could someone have an idea of truth and know that, you know, what, what it means for a thing to be real or whatever without having an idea of that? Oh, or good, good question. Possible? So maybe that's what he means then, right? Because you can't, if truth is a correspondence with reality, you can't have an idea of truth. You can't have an idea of, of ideas, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> of, uh, of, of, of truth, of ideas as like, Truth, truth, things, thingies, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, without an idea of, of, of fundamental reality. Huh. So, like the Amr Chachmas, then is like in the endeavors that you're of, of, of striving to to gain Chachma. You know, like all of those are resting upon this thing, and then ideas themselves. You know, ideas exist in hierarchies, and there are fundamental ideas, and you know, like ideas of like essence and accident and whatever. You know. But those ideas have no reality if if they're not if you don't have an idea of reality, you know. Right. 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 Uh, I want to pause this one second here. Um, Bergenberg has been, uh, yeah, bombarding me with uh, like, oh look, all the uh, you know, Rishonim. Oh yeah. Why is he been bombarding you about it? Uh, not bombarding me, just like he's he told me about it a few times. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was like, you have this like <laughs> feud with him? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let, let let's uh. Let's uh, let these ideas percolate a little bit for the studies of the Chachmas. Let's now try to understand what uh, I guess you guys have hey, or halacha hey is doing, right? Hamatsui hazeh, hu eloka haolam adon kol Now that's the first time he is um, identifying this matsui, right? I mean, that's that's what the sentence does. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, what does he mean though, eloka haolam and adon kol That That's that's a little tougher. Right. And it's also the first time he uses the word God, right? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and I don't. I mean, because on the surface, that sounds like um, like a what do you call um, uh, like to exclude or to negate like a deistic notion because he's an adon, he's a lord, uh -huh. you know, you can't be a lord if you create it and leave it, you know, right. uh, I don't know if that's what he's doing, but, and then that support what it always says next, that he, who am I, I didn't look this up yesterday, let's see which goggle this is, this is, this is my footnote guy, it says, so according to ancient astronomy, um, Garam Shamaimi i Shakuf Hamania S Marakasashamaim. So this is the heavenly cause that is um I'm not sure that what Shakuf means in modern Hebrew. Uh does that mean um hold on, I gotta look up in my dictionary here. I gotta bring a green dictionary here. Oh, we have one over there. Uh I think I can get this by the time you you get there. Oh, but now it says not responding. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, 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 the little guy uh, to the right, up to the right. Yeah, that one. That's the best dictionary, in my really? opinion. Yeah. Cool. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, it says, uh, this is um, transparent. And this says, um, Shakuf. Yeah, transparent, clear, or lucid. Yeah, so it's a transparent, um, what did it say? Shakuf, uh, so it's a garam shamami shakuf, a transparent heavenly cause, hamania es marechas that moves the heavenly hosts, the heavenly systems. And, um, and uh, okay, fine. And without any kates vataklis, without any um, limit or end, bakosh uh, in lo hefseik, with a power that has no, that doesn't cease. Um, and because the sphere rotates constantly and it's impossible to rotate a rotator of And he is the one who rotates it without a hand, without a body. So the question is, what is he trying to convey here? Right? Um, so it's definitely saying stuff about God being actively involved in the motions of the heavens or in the motions of the, uh, of the everything uh, on earth as well, you know? Um, and then the other question is like, you know, and again, it's like a classic question, but we know that this is not true anymore. Right. Um, and so like, does the wrong mean, does he think that this idea, this specific idea is part of the mitzvah? In which case, uh, what do we say now? Or is he, is this like an expression of a certain element of the mitzvah that we now have to find our own expression for in order to satisfy this part of the mitzvah? Or, some other thing, like, or is, is there some other reason he's including this? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, the biggest point is that, is that the universe runs because Hashem is running it. Yeah. He's like the, the engine. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so just to um, to contrast that with the, I mentioned this briefly yesterday, of the Imam Tukul that, um, that even someone who holds by the eternity of the universe could still hold by this concept of Imam Tukul like Aristotle, right? And uh, I've never seen this in Aristotle, but whoever sees anything in Aristotle, everyone only just like hears about it or reads about it. Um, uh, but like uh, the, that the notion, the Aristotle held by this idea and that the universe is dependent on God but that uh, it's the muscle used is like a shadow of a wall, right? Or a shadow of a pillar, right? That the shadow is dependent on the wall, but the wall didn't do like an act of creating the shadow. And it doesn't, it's not acting upon the shadow currently either, you know? So like you could have the idea of the first paragraph that God is the, is the uh, the wall to the universe's shadow that the universe is contingent on him, but then once and, and you could have that and you could even have that in I don't know if you could have that in terms of the second halakha also, but once you get to Hamatu Izehu Eloka Olamadon Kal Arts, that is refuting that idea. The idea that God is constantly involved in operating the thing, I think. Well, the, the second thing you could say, like, let's say with the wall of the shadow, you could say 
if something else, if I leave a light on the other side, yeah, then that could remove the shadow without um, affecting the wall itself. Mm -hmm. um, in Aristotle could theoretically say that that's the case. Right, if you had a different muscle, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's also interesting that he puts in here below Yad Vlogov. Is that part of the mitzvah? Because he, he he explains God not having a goof um, in under Yichud Hashem, which is the rest of the mm -hmm. parak, you know. But he just throws that in here. Like like let's say, here's a good question. Let's say you hold by everything the Ramam writes here, except you hold that God is uh, is is turning the sphere with a hand. So would you be Mekayim the first mitzvah or not? I'm inclined to say you would, right? But like, so then why is he include below Yad Vlogov? Or is that just to show us that like, is that just because the Ram wants to be thorough and so not like leave you with the notion that God has a goof even before he's formally introduced that concept? Right. Okay. I feel about when we um, when we just read when we read just now. Yeah. I um I had an association to a person like physically turning the wheel. Right. Yeah. Right. And I, I actually. Was like about to make that like gesture. Oh yeah. And then, and then we read the. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. I mean, it is possible. I'm, I'm not yeah. saying that that's a. Yeah. I mean, it's totally possible that he's just saying that, so as to not leave you with, with the wrong idea. Yeah. Because that's part of the mitzvah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just want to make it clear. I, I don't think that the, that the guy has a body. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you didn't know where the Mordebukhams were in the yeshiva, so who knows what you know? <laughs> All right. Um, hmm. Yeah. So we're still stuck with this question. So what is it that the wrong wants us to have? Uh, uh, how, what is this element of the mitzvah here? I mean, it's hard to say that the wrong one, I mean, you could say this. <laughs> it's hard to say that the wrong one holds that, like, that that this specific, actually, maybe he does. I don't know. Because <laughs> he he also later on, you know, where else in the mission tour, he brings this up, uh, not in terms of his explanation of, like, this, but with the Avram Abino, right? That this is how Avram Abino discovered God, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was, I was about to say, it's hard to, hold, to imagine that the wrong one holds that this is a fundamental idea you know, but maybe he does. Like maybe he he does hold that this is a fundamental uh, idea that like, you know, that you uh, that is not like a a passing uh, current theory in science that could get rejected. Because mm -hmm. this the thing is like Ram definitely held that science evolves because he holds that people used to think that astrology was correct and like and and uh, and he thought that he had you know that you know he, he was convinced it was false. So like he knows that that theories of astrology could get rejected. But like, would he hold that 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 this is more like in philosophy than in physics? Because we we classify this as an idea in physics, and that's why we that's and we, and we or astronomy, and we reject it. You know, maybe he held it was more like a thing in um, in in logic or in uh, in philosophy. And it's hard because the lines weren't really clearly drawn back then between natural philosophy and uh, metaphysics. Yeah. Well. And the other thing that's it's dancing, also, yeah. Um, their science, I'd say, like points to their need to be an active, like external thing happening to, um, because there's like an additional force that that is not directly caused by something. Yeah. Um, whereas our model of it, like our understanding of science doesn't have that type of so this is this is where we have uh mr or probably dr edward fesser uh in his proofs of god book where he tries he gives a um an updated uh version of this which i made a powerpoint oh my goodness <laughs> it was <laughs> that right. powerful yeah um uh um <laughs> i heard people being knocked out of their chairs <laughs> The chair to be knocked out. That's like a Yosoto so right. level. Well, uh, um, but he gives a um, a modern day version of this that he holds it is relevant now. Um, 
And he says it's due, all due to a simple mistake, a basic, basic mistake that when we say motion, we think of motion in, the, in terms of physics, but when Aristotle said motion, he said in terms of change. That's what, that's what he meant by it, is that it's change. And therefore, he, when, he, when Fesser recasts the argument, he does it in terms of all change he, that you can prove from the phenomenon of change that God exists. Really? Yeah. Hmm. We could go through that if you're interested. In, but uh, but um, so, so the reason I bring this up, that might be a possibility that the wrong is saying here, that it's, a, it, it's, not a, a, it's not knowledge of a particular theory of physics. It's knowledge of a certain, um, uh, of, of logics or metaphysics, you know, but that connects to the physical world. Yeah, it's interesting because in the first part of the mitzvah, he's not talking about change at all. He's just talking yeah, about like right. existence. Right. So is that like okay? So that's a new element. Yeah. Like yeah. Not only is he the cause of existence, but he's the cause of change. Yeah. We we, we can. Um, I'll give you an option here. Okay. Um, so I designed the PowerPoint to be deliverable in ten minutes, <laughs> ten or fifteen minutes. So we can do a quick run through of it now, if you want, just so you can see the big picture. And then we could like decide about whether we want to actually like think into it more in depth, like tomorrow or whatever, or, or, or we could do something else. What do you want to do? Yeah, we could do. Yeah. Okay, let me find it. Uh, give me a second. Was in my tefillah class, proof of God. You don't see that very often. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the reason why this came up was because I overheard students say when they were going over the um, uh, Avram, uh, um, Ram saying that Avram Avinu discovering God because of this, uh, you know, uh, thinking about heavenly motions and saying that it's uh, it's impossible without a mover. Uh, students said, that's such a stupid argument. And I said, no. <laughs> like, you might argue that the argument no longer holds true, but to say it's just a stupid argument, that's just not accurate. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. It's a 17 minute lesson. Ah. Oh, all right, whatever. We'll, we'll try. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, hold on here. Okay. So the proof is like this premise number one change occurs. You good? Yeah, okay. So. Um, and so the examples that this is, this is all based on Fesser's thing. So I'm going to go through these example, examples. Actually, it's not all based. I think I can play on examples. Example number one, coffee in a cup becomes cooler. Okay. A leaf on the tree falls to the ground. A puddle grows larger as the rain continues. You swat a fly and it dies. Okay. These are examples of change. Okay. Um, coffee in a cup becoming cooler is a qualitative change. Okay. The, the quality of, of coolness, uh, um, uh, it's a change in the quality of coolness. Okay, a leaf on falling to the uh, on a tree falling to the ground is a change of location. A puddle growing uh, larger as the rain continues is a quantitative change. More water is, is going to the puddle, and then a swatting fly and it dying is a substantial change. That's an Aristotelian term that it goes from being a live fly to a dead fly, which is a change in the very flyness of the fly. It ain't so fly anymore. Okay, <laughs> proof two or not proof two. Sorry, premise two, change equals actualization of a potential. Okay, so explanation. When coffee changes, hot coffee changes to cold co coffee, it is actualizing its potential for coldness. Okay, um, to say, and this is my example, to say that hot coffee cannot become a cold burrito is to say that coffee lacks the potential of burrito-ness. So what is it that allows coffee to change to cold? Because it has the potential for coldness, but it doesn't have the potential to become Bill Gates, you know, to become a burrito. Uh, when caterpillar changes into a butterfly, it is actualizing its potential for butterflyness. To say that a caterpillar cannot become a chicken is to say that caterpillars lack the potential for chickenness. Okay. Premise three. So if change occurs, change equals actualization of a potential. Three, change requires a changer. Okay. Okay. Which in parentheses, potential can only be actualized by something that is already actual. Hmm. Okay. So going to the coffee. Um, 
uh, hot coffee cannot cool itself. Okay, hot coffee's potential to become cold cannot be actualized on its own. Hot coffee can only become cooled by something that is actually cool, like me. No. Um, in order to become cold, there needs to be an actual coldness outside of the coffee that actualizes the coffee's potential for cold. So for example, the air in the room, right? Or ice cubes, okay? Um, and if nothing was cold anywhere in the universe, coffee could not become cold. Mm -hmm. uh, another example, a leaf cannot fall from the tree on its own. Its potential for motion has to be actualized by something which is actually moving. Um, a shirt cannot become dirty on its own. Its potential for dirtiness must be actualized by something which is actually dirty or dirt, okay? <laughs> which we're saying is dirty, okay? So that was premise three. Change requires a changer. Okay. Premise four, a changer undergoing change needs a changer, okay? Change. Yes. Yeah. Okay, when something causes a change, this is sometimes, hold on, gotta move this. This is sometimes because it is undergoing a change itself. Sometimes, okay, not, Wait, not always. Okay. When something causes a change, yeah. this is sometimes caused because it is undergoing change itself. When that is the case, then the, ch the change also needs a changer. Okay, for example. Let's say, let's say a thrown rock hits a branch and then the- Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly, right. So for example, the coolness of the air in the room made the coffee cold, but the coolness of the air itself was merely a potential until the air conditioner actualized it. Uh, the flick of your wrist causes the fly swatter to hit and kill the fly, but the flick of your wrist itself was merely potential until the firing of motor neurons in your brain actualized it. Um, in other words, I gotta hide this uh, panel here because I got more words under. In other words, sometimes when a potential is being actualized, what actualizes it itself is something which has gone from potential to actual. When that is the case, there must've been another actualization which made that happen. Okay, cool. all right. Five, a hierarchical series of changes. He's going to find all this in a second. A hierarchical series of changes must have a first member which has inherent causal power. Okay, so what does this mean? So first of all, he says there's a, a difference between a linear and a hierarchical series. Okay, so um, here's a, uh, a restatement of step four, okay, of the changer undergoing change needs a changer. Sorry, uh, yeah, okay. Um, if something which causes a change is undergoing a change itself, then that change requires a changer of its own, which implies a series of changers. And there are two types of series of changers, linear and hierarchical. Okay, linear is a chain of changes going back in time. Okay, so for example, a chain of dominoes falling in sequence. That's not what we're talking about here. Okay, hierarchical is a chain of changes, meaning actualizations of potentials existing right now. For example, when you pedal a bike to make uh, uh, pedaling a bike to make the wheel turn simultaneously, okay. When you push on the pedals, you are turning the wheel, okay. It's simultaneous. Okay. As soon as you stop, it stops. Okay. Um, a paintbrush paints the wall because its handle is being moved by a moving hand simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So it's not this caused this throughout time. It's this is happening now, okay. So now we can explain what this means. What, what so again, linear series is dominoes existing back in time. So there, if you want to apply this to our coffee example, a linear series is the coldness of the coffee was caused by the coolness of the air, which was caused by the air conditioner, which was caused to switch on when you flip the switch, which was caused by you feeling hot. Those are, that's a linear series, okay? Or the fly was killed by the impact of the fly swatter, which was caused by the flick of your wrist, which was caused by the firing of certain motor neurons, which was caused by your annoyance at the flies buzzing, which was caused by the motion of its wings, okay? In a linear, linear series, one potential was actualized by another, which was actualized by another, which was actualized by another. And for this reason, and this is the key part, each step is dispensable after it happens, okay? If you flip the switch on the air conditioner, it will cool the room, which will cool the coffee, even if you leave. Your current presence is not required to cool the coffee. All that was needed was your switch flipping, okay? Now, but for a hierarchical series, the pedal or the paintbrush, that's happening right now. So. Um, here's his example. This gets a little bit more abstract, okay? The coffee cup is sitting three feet above the floor, okay, on a table, right? What is holding the coffee up? Meaning, what is causing its potential to be three feet off the floor? What is causing that potential to be actualized right now is the desk that's holding it up, okay? But what's holding the desk up, meaning what is actualizing the desk's potential to hold the coffee up right now is the floor. Okay, what's holding the floor up right now? The foundation of the building. What's holding the foundation up? The earth and so on, okay? 
And in the hierarchical series, one potential is currently being actualized by another, which is currently being actualized by another, which is currently being actualized. Okay. Um, and this is all happening simultaneously, not in time. Right. Okay. And here we get to our final, to, the, to the, the premise. Now we can explain the premise is again, to restate it, a hierarchical series of changes must have a first member, which has inherent causal power. Okay. Hierarchical. So um, in a linear series, you don't need that. Okay. Um, I'm skipping here, but for a series of, of actualizations of potentials, which is this right now, you do need that. Does there need to be a first member? Yes, of a hierarchical series. With the linear series, you don't necessarily need it. And thinking about that as a whole headache, like why can't you have infinite dominoes? But with a hierarchical series, since each one is currently dependent on, on the, something else that's happening right now, then, uh, then and you, you need a first member, okay? And that first member has to have inherent causal power. Yes. Okay. Again, this first time through is just to get the, the contours of the proof here, okay? Um, and, and by first, it means that the change comes from itself and doesn't come from something else, okay? Um, and, uh, and for example, again, I'm just going, walking through this example. I think we're almost done actually. So with the, the case of the, of the coffee, since the desk floor and foundation have no power on their own to hold up the coffee three feet in the air, the series now cannot exist now unless there's something that does have the potential to hold these things up without itself needing to be held up. Or, okay, hold on a second. Oh, in, in other words, the desk floor and foundation are instrumental and derivative in their power, but they're only able to do what they do because of a first member, which is non-instrumental and non-derivative in its power. Um, the first member of the hierarchical series must have inherent or built-in causal power, whereas the other ones have only derived causal power. Now we have the proof. Okay, that's all you need for the proof. Since change occurs, and since change is the actualization of potential, and since potentiality can only be actualized by something which is itself actual, and since an actualizer which is itself being actualized needs an actualizer, and since a hierarchical series must have a first member which has inherent causal power, therefore, this first member must be pure actuality, an unactualized actualizer, and that's God. Cool. Okay. <laughs> the last one. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, I'm going to just say the whole thing again. Since change occurs, and since the cha change is the actualization of potential, and since potentiality can only be actualized by something which is itself actual. And since an actualizer, which is itself being actualized, needs an actualizer, right? That's the coffee being, the coolness in the coffee being actualized by the air conditioning, that needs an actualizer because the actualizer, the, the air conditioner is being actualized, so it needs an actualizer. And since a hierarchical series, meaning change is existing right now, has to have a first member with inherent causal power. Because it can't go on infinitely. Right. You can't have so therefore, so this first member must be pure actuality, an unactualized actualizer. Mm -hmm. And that is what we call God. The unactualized actualizer, which again, and in the in the the way people call this with Aristotle is the unmoved mover. But what Fester's whole thing is trying to show is that when Aristotle talks about motion, motion is just a specific example of actualization of potential. Mm -hmm. So what he really means is God is the unactualized actualizer. You know, and it'd be and, and to, to deny that would be as ridiculous as saying that if you had imagine so you have you're, you're pedaling the the um the bike okay so let's say you're pedaling let's say you have a wheel that's turning because of gears that's turning so if you try to argue that there's no there's nothing pushing those first gears that makes everything else go then that's just absurd you know there has to be something that has inherent causal power that's starting it to go you can't have gears all the way back right you know why couldn't that first thing be the end of a linear or not linear or was it series yeah linear yeah linear, linear. Yeah. yeah because so with linear i don't know if the question makes sense because linear series is just a different kind of series meaning that historically it set off stuff in motion but then that doesn't prove but then you can't you wouldn't be able to derive from anything now whether, like, no, because like, let's just take it from Aristotle's perspective. Like, if you hold time is infinite, so then there didn't need to be a first thing that started stuff in motion. Right. But if you hold that change happens right now, is happening right now, then you do need stuff to be 
uh, actualizing it. Mm. You know, now, by the way, just as a thing, in his actual book, he goes through this proof and he goes through refutations of all a bunch of different objections against it, which if we were being thorough, that's what we would do. Yeah. But my goal in incorporating this into the Ramam is to show, to me, this is the best candidate for what the Ramam could mean, that, that this is a philosophical proof that exists independently of modern physics, but is connected to the world, you know? Um, and that's the type of thing that I feel like the Ramam is saying, even if it's not this exact thing, you know? Cool. Yeah. Okay, let's stop for here for today. <laughs> stop thinking about. <laughs> All right. Would you still call that um, 